Now that I have my connection set up, it's time to create my first recipe. I'm going to go back a level to my project and then select the issue reporting folder. And then once in here, I can create a new recipe by either clicking create recipe down below or clicking the create button in the upper right corner. So I'll select recipe this time and I'll want to give my recipe a useful name. I'm uh, trying to stick to my usual naming conventions for consistency. So in square brackets, I'm indicating that this is a customer support uh, business function. Then I have a three letter code to tell me what kind of asset this is. So this is a recipe. So I'm going to call it CS REC for recipe 001. So the first recipe in here, and then a pipe with a more descriptive uh, title for what this recipe should be called, which is going to be create or update a JIRA issue for high priority Salesforce cases. And this will be found under the issue reporting subfolder. So now I can start building and I am ready to build my first recipe. Now I need to pick a recipe starting point. I can pick a starting point to build on my own or my trusty AI co-pilot on here could also start the recipe for me, give me some suggestions on how to build. I'm gonna let the co-pilot rest for today. Maybe we'll come back at a later point. So right now I'm going to click pick a starting point to build for myself. And here I have a selection of things that could start my recipe. I could have it be triggered from an app, which means that so in this example, I am trying to have when a new case is updated in Salesforce, have that be sent to Jira for my engineering team. So if I selected trigger for a map, I can have it set up where Salesforce is the one that's going to be triggering this whole recipe. Alternatively, I could run my recipe on a schedule. So that means like, let's say maybe 5 p.m. every day, that's when I want to trigger my automation process. And there's a number of other options we have too. You could build an API endpoint, you could build a Slack bot. We're not gonna get into all of these, but for what I'm trying to do today, I want it to be Salesforce that is going to be the action that starts this whole automation process. So trigger from app will be my choice. So the trigger is going to be the business event that kicks off this whole automation. In this example, when a high priority Salesforce ticket is created, that's when we want to start the process. So I'm going to click select an app and trigger event, and I'm going to search for an app. I'll search for Salesforce. And it comes up here. And now we have some different choices of ways we could trigger this recipe from Salesforce. What I'll be wanting to do, which comes up under the recommended option, is to trigger when I get a new or updated record. But depending on what I'm trying to do, there are other triggers. So I can also choose triggers that may be firing in real time. So that means, for example, let's say there's a new or updated record. As soon as the record comes up, trigger the automation right away. And in other situations, maybe I don't want to do it each time there's a new, uh, a new case is updated. Maybe I have hundreds or thousands of records that are being updated all the time. In a situation like that, I might want to batch them together. So to do maybe a hundred at a time or however many I choose. Uh, so you want to take the, you want to take uh, performance into account here. So depending on the volume that you're going to be moving through your automation, you may choose to either do it in real time or in batches. The, the choice is really yours there. But here I'm going to select new or updated record, which comes up. And then I want to select my Salesforce connection here. And then I get to choose which object that I want to do, what I want to be looking at, I should say. And if you're familiar with Salesforce, you know there are a lot of objects here. Also, any custom objects you may have been created will also be listed here. So whatever objects your particular Salesforce account has, you have access to them here as well. But I'm going to use a pre-built 
object here, which is going to be case. I want to check when a case is updated. And then I have an option down here for fields to retrieve. So we can see all the different fields that a case can retrieve for us. If I select nothing, it's going to just automatically pull in everything. But going back to performance, if I'm working with massive quantities of data, I may want to be more selective about which fields I'm pulling in so that the data sizes are smaller. Uh, here, what I'm working with here is pretty low volume, so I'm not particularly worried about that. And down here, we have something pretty cool. We have our little time machine, which can select how far in the past this recipe should pick up events from. So let's say I created this new Salesforce automation. I'm really excited about it, but I realize, oh, I have a bunch of old Salesforce cases that I would also like to notify my engineers about. Well, I don't have to necessarily wait for a new Salesforce case, or I don't have to recreate the existing Salesforce case. That's pretty cumbersome, not a good use of time. So I can then choose how far in the past I want this recipe to pick things up from. So by default, it's going to select an hour ago, but let's say that I want to import all the Salesforce updates from the last month. I can choose last month as my starting point for, to run this recipe. You can also enter custom values here as well if you want to get a little bit more precise about it. And then down here, we have the option to set a trigger condition. So in a situation like this, right now as it is, anytime there's a new or updated Salesforce case, the automation will trigger. But I don't want to create a JIRA ticket for every single Salesforce case only the ones that are high priority. So by setting a trigger condition, I can specify. So the I need to start with the trigger data. I'll click into this field here. And when I do, you can see that my data tree appears on the left side here. And it will show me all the data pills that are being output from each step of the automation. So from step one, I have a new or updated case, and these are all the things that a new or updated case could spit out at me. And what I really want to look here for is priority. So I'll enter that, and I can either drag or dr and drop it onto the field here, or I can just click it. That will also do the same. So it will show me that it's pulling in priority, and specifically the priority data from step one, which is our trigger. Then we can have set a condition. So what about the priority do I care about? I want to check that it equals the value of high. So only cases that are high priority will be, be factored into this automation. And you may be wondering, how did you know to type in high? Well, the data tree does give us some clues. We, the letters A, B, C let us know that this is a text value, and it will suggest medium with a capital M. So I know that I can replicate the same thing here. And this value of high is hard-coded, which isn't the necessarily the best practice. So I, alternatively, instead of typing in text, I can choose formula and then decide to format it as priority down case equals a string value of high. So that way this will be uh, case insensitive. And Mercado will also help me with giving me different functions I could use. I would encourage you though, if you're interested in learning more about formulas, go take a look at the formula docs. And we also have formula AI too, which can also be pretty handy. So this would be this would be the ideal way to do it though. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to switch it back to text and just have it be high with a capital H. And we can see here for each step that Workado is annotating the steps to make them more readable. So it's very clear to me now that if this is a new or updated case in Salesforce, if the priority equals high, then we trigger our following actions.
And if I wanted to get even more readable, I could add a comment. My comments say, trigger when there is a new or updated high priority case in Salesforce. And that's looking a lot better. Before I get any further, I do want to test each step one at a time. I don't want to take a bunch of steps and then if something's not working, have to backtrack and figure out what went wrong. So we'll start by just testing our trigger. Are we getting data from Salesforce? So to test my recipe, I'm going to go to my nav bar up here. First click save, save often, I highly re recommend. And then click test recipe. And Mercado is looking for a trigger event. It couldn't find anything though. So in order to trigger this recipe, you may recall, we need a, something to happen in Salesforce. We need there to be a change to a high priority a high priority case in Salesforce. So I'll flip back into my Salesforce account and I have a case that says motor design hindering performance. Right now that's a medium priority ticket or a medium priority case, I should say. So let's switch that from medium to high and then click save. So now this has been updated, I can go back and let's try checking again. And we can see here that this was successful. And if I click on my trigger here, I can see what data was inputted. So it's telling me that it's looking for a case. And when this first started, we should have picked up events from an hour ago. And then the output, we can see what Salesforce is returning to me. And so I can see here that the data, I am getting the data from my case over here. It's all showing up in my output. This is looking really good. 